Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about signals in Linux and Linux uses signal to communicate with the process running on the system. You can use signals to either stop or start or to kill a process and signals are software interpreters sent to a program to indicate that an important event has occurred. A signal indicates that a user has asked the program to do something that is not in the usual flow of control. For example, when the user press control C, if you want to see a list of signals on your system, you can use the command trap dash L and it will bring up a full list of signals for you. You can also use kill dash L signal as well and you would get the same results. There are 64 signals in Linux you can use. So these are the alphanumeric value and these are the numeric value for the signals. Not every signal is being used by developers. So I have printed the most common or the ones that I used a lot in my programs. So on my screen, I have a few signals with their description and a brief examples how you can use the signals. The sig up signal and the sig up signal you can also reference it with the numeric value one and the sig up signal mean to hang up the process so for example if you are connecting to an ssh server and the server has disconnected or you accidentally log out or you just logged out in general two things can happen either the program ended gracefully that's when you logged out or if the connection dropped then it will try to reconnect or uh, connect you back to the server then you have the sig int signal and the sig int signal is referenced with the numeric value two and the sig int signal is the interrupt signal in linux it also known as the death of process the sig int signal is activated the when the user press control C on the keyboard to end a program or to terminate a program. You also have the sig quit signal and you can reference the sig quit signal with the numeric value three. The sig quit signal is used to stop the process. And an example of the sig quit signal when the user press control D to force the, uh, to force a process to stop, or when you use the kill command to kill a process that is running on your computer. You also have the SIG FPE and the SIG FPE, you can reference that signal with the numeric value eight. The SIG FP signal is used when the user tries to perform an illegal mathematic operation, for example, division by zero. You also have the SIG kill signal that can be referenced using the numeric value nine. And the SIG kill signal is used to kill the process. So the sig quit signal is used to stop the process and the sig kill signal is used to kill the process. And the sig kill signal and the sig stop signal cannot be handled. So when you're writing any uh, program and you use the trap command, you cannot use the sig kill and the sig stop. The trap command would not notice those two signals. I'm going to create a simple script to demonstrate how the signals work in Linux. So I'm going to clear my screen and then I'm going to use the touch command and I'm going to create a file called sigtest.sh. And if I do an ls on my folder, the sigtest.sh file is there. So I'm going to give myself execution power using the chmod command. So I'm going to say chmod 755 and I want the sigtest.sh file. And if I do an xls, my file is now executable. So I'm going to use vi as the text editor. I'm going to create a simple while loop. So I'm going to say while. So this meanwhile true do and I want an echo statement to say press press control C to terminate the program and I'm going to make the program sleep for one second and I'm going to use the done to end off my while loop. So I'm going to press colon WQ to save and quit. And now I'm going to run the sig test file. So sig test dot sh to run it. And the program is running and it's going to run 
it will not stop until you press Control C. So when I press Control C on my keyboard right now, I'm going to interrupt this program by stopping it. So that's why Control C is known as the interrupt signal. You can also use signals to kill certain processes running in the background. I'm going to create a file. I'm going to use the touch command and I'm going to create a file called PID stop.sh and I'm going to say chmod755 pid stop dot sh. So now I have this pid stop sh file in my folder right now. So if I do an ls, then over here I can see my pid stop dot sh. So now I'm going to use vi as my text editor. And inside of the text editor, I'm going to write simple program. So I'm going to say count and I want my count equals to zero. And I'm going to echo my PID number. And to get the PID number, you use dollar sign dollar sign. I'm going to use this while loop and I'm going to say while my count variable is less than 10. I'm going to use my do statement and I'm going to make the program sleep for two seconds. Then I'm going to initialize my count variable now to dollar sign. Now I'm going to increase my count variable. So count now is going to equals to count plus one. And then I want to print the count value. So I'm going to say echo dollar sign count. Then I want to finish off my script. And after that, I'm going to exit the program. So I'm going to say exit zero and I'm going to hit colon WQ to save and quit. So now I'm going to say dot slash PID stop dot SH and I hit enter. It printed my process ID number uh, within every increment. It will stop for two seconds. And when it reached 10, the program ended. Now I can kill that process using the kill command. When I use the kill command to stop this process or to kill this process, I will be using the sig quit signal. So I'm going to go ahead again and run the script one more time. And I'm going to open the next terminal. So right on the side here, I'm going to use the command kill dash nine. And I want the process ID. So the process ID is one five, eight zero and I hit enter. And if I bring this down a little bit more, you see that the killed, so it said killed. So I stopped the process and that activated the sig quit signal. If you don't want the user to stop the process or to terminate a program or to exit a program, you can use the trap command, which will prevent the user from stopping the program. Why use trap in your program? One, people use trap to clean up temporary files. Another reason why people use the trap command in their program to ignore signals. So if I go back now inside of, inside of this file and I can put in the trap signal in here so I can say trap and I want to trap the sig int signal and instead of the trap, I'm going to say echo and I say, sorry, I cannot stop. And this time I want to use the sig int signal. This would stop or prevent the program from stopping if the user hits control C. So I'm going to save my file and I'm going to run the script again. So now it's printing. So I'm going to hit control C and it says, sorry, I cannot stop. I'm going to hit control C again and it will not stop the program. So that's how you use the trap signal in Linux. Another reason to use the trap command in your script is to remove unwanted files. I'm going to go back inside of my PID folder and I'm going to copy and I'm going to exit out the program. I'm going to save this and exit out. So what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to create a new folder and I'm doing all of this for clarity purposes. So you can see when a file has been created and when a file has been removed, I'm going to CD into a folder 
that I've created in the past called tutorial. And if I do an LS on this folder, I have Python file and this HTML CSS file. So what I'm going to do inside of this folder, I'm going to create a script. I'm going to use the touch command and the name of the script is going to call Let's call it sigdil.sh. I'm going to use the chmod command for execution permission. I want to get the sigdil.sh file. And if I do another ls, I have my sigdil.sh file in here. I'm going to open this file using vi. And inside of this file, I'm going to paste the code that I copied previously. So I'm going to just do two things inside of this file. The first thing I want to do right above the echo command, I'm going to put an ls-al to a file called a.out. This file does not exist in my folder. With this command, it's going to create a file called a.out. So now I'm going to go back inside of the trap command. Instead of making an echo statement, I'm going to say remove. I'm going to use the dash R and I want to remove this dollar sign file. So for the dollar sign file, I'm going to create that variable above. So I want to create a variable called file and I'm going to initialize that variable to my present working directory. So inside I'm going to CD into the tutorial folder and I'm going to use the PWD command to get the full path for that folder. So inside of the tutorial folder, I'm going to copy this path and I'm going to paste it right here. I want to look for a dot out inside of the tutorial folder. So a dot out. So this is the file that I'm looking for. And this is the full path for the file. So currently this file is not there yet. This file will be created when I run this program using this command ls-al a.out. So if the program runs successful with exit zero, then the file will not get deleted. However, if the user interrupt the program, the file will be deleted. So I'm going to save this file. So now if I do an ls, there is no file in here called a dot out. So I'm going to pull up my next screen and I'm going to run the script. So now that it's running, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do an ls on this folder. So now it created the a dot out file. So I'm going to interrupt this program using control C. So you see, I keep pressing control C and it stops. So now it's saying there is no folder because I deleted. So if I go back to the screen now and I do a next LS, the file has been deleted because I interrupted the program. So I'm going to run the script one more time and it's running. So it created the file. No, let's do a cat on a dot out and it listed the files and folder for me. So let's interrupt this program again. Let's run back the next cat command the file is gone. So that's how you use the trap command in Linux. You can use the trap command to clean up any useless files in your program. And you can also use the trap command to ignore signals in your program. So once again, thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing. And I will see you on the next tutorial.